Okay, there's something about I'll sing about the blood. Oh, yeah. And I felt the power as I was singing that today. Oh, and then I'm just kind of clear some of the stuff off. You can be seated. I'm going to dive in today to a Bible study that I hope makes sense. I'm going to do my best. God, I was studying for my message last night, and I was, uh, as I was studying, and I was looking up some of the scriptures that were relevant to the topic that I was studying, I God just started revealing to me some different things in those scriptures that he wanted me to talk about, as opposed to the ones that I had uh, decided I was going to talk about. So I'm just thankful that God gave me a word last night. It is fresh here, so just pray that it comes out of my mouth uh, the same way that it's in my head, because it's very, uh, this very powerful understanding his word. I mean, I want to start out in Proverbs 3. I'm a little nervous today for some reason. I think it'd be my first time, but I'm just, I just want to make sure I say what God wants me to say. I mean, I don't like to just get up here and fill a time space. Amen. But Proverbs 3 and 13, this is, we always talk about, let me just say this real quick verse as a kind of a perfect preface to my message. There is uh, a high degree of importance on prayer and fasting. And I agree with that with all of my heart. But we always say the same things. We always say, uh, and then it's the truth. That's why we always say it. But if we always say, if you want to get somewhere in God, it's going to take dedication. It's going to take prayer, fasting, and time in the Word. Okay? But well, we do a lot of teaching about prayer. We do a lot of teaching about fasting. And we understand those things. I'm not saying we all apply it like we should. But a lot is missed when it comes to the importance of why we need to study the Word of God. And why we need to get the Word of God in our hearts so strong. So I want to talk about, I don't really necessarily have a title or anything like that, but I'm just going to talk about uh, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Those are some things that we really need to uh, address as a, not just our church, but as a church body in a whole, because the scripture tells us, and I'll get to it in a little while, so I'll jump ahead, and it says, my people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. And then, so we do need to have, I'm so thankful for the group of God that we've been having on Sundays and the powerful anointed time we've been having in prayer meeting, but there does come a time where we need to have some teaching. And, I'm, and we have great teaching here. I'm not saying we don't have teaching, but sometimes we need to really just understand why we need the teaching. And we know we need teaching, but here's why we need the teaching. So starting in Proverbs 3, it says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that giveth understanding. And I'm going to read, um, there's going to be quite a few scriptures, and, but because I can't say it better than the scripture says it, okay? So I pray that you just bear with me. I pray that I don't, I'm not too monotone for you. But it says that for the merchandise of it, the merchandise of getting wisdom and understanding, is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than of fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared to her. So everything that you could want, everything that you could, this is coming from Solomon, who was the wisest man. And we, if you read the scripture about Solomon, one of the things that set him apart, the reason why God blessed him so mightily, is because he could have asked for anything that he wanted. He could have asked for all the riches. He could have asked for all the wives. He could have asked for anything, all the property, all the cattle. He could have asked for anything, but he asked for wisdom. And God out of that gave him wisdom. And the, because he had wisdom, he was able to obtain all these other things. But it was, a, it was such a blessing that it also became a curse to him. Because he thought himself wiser, wiser than God at points. So anyway, as I get as I get through this, it says that it's to be desired more than any of those other things. And then it says in verse number 16, it says, Length of days is in her right hand. And with, if you want length of days, it's in wisdom. And in her left hand is riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and her paths are peace. We all want peace. It comes in having a firm understanding, knowledge, and wisdom of who he is. And then she is a tree of life. And then remember that. She's a tree of life. To them that lay hold upon her. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. Amen. Amen. Self-explanatory. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down into the dew. Number 21, it says, My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Don't let wisdom and understanding and knowledge depart from your eyes. He's giving a warning here. He says, Keep sound wisdom and discretion. 
so shall thy light, so shall thy be light unto thy soul, and grace unto thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in the way safely, and the foot shall not stumble. You want to talk about having an understanding of how you don't fall down, how you don't trip up and get tired of falling over the same things? This is how you're going to keep yourself from stumbling, the Bible says. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. You want peace at night? When you lie down, then you need to preserve these, the Bible says. Sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden, be not afraid of sudden fear, neither the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. All right. And then, that's a lot, of, lot to digest. And that's what I read last night. I'm still trying to digest it. So I'm not going to, uh, by any means, uh, do it justice of what all of is in that scripture. But I want you to write, if you don't write any other scriptures down, I want you to strike that Proverbs 12, 3, 13 through 26. Yeah. Write that down because I'm telling you, you need to go back and study it. Because I can't do it an hour. 15, 20 minutes what I need to do in this area because it's, the whole word of God is based off of these concepts. Not this scripture, but these concepts of knowing and understanding the word of God. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 23 and 23, it goes on to tell us, it says, buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom, instruction, and understanding. I'm setting the foundation right now that I'll get into. Paul understood this concept that Solomon was trying to portray when he was speaking in Philippians. Three, we talk about this scripture all the time. It's kind of a scripture that we say, don't, you know, don't hold on to your past. Don't, don't, uh, don't get caught up in what was, but why don't you just press towards God, move forward. We say that scripture, but here's what this scripture is talking about. If you start in verse number seven of Philippians 3, he says that, but what so things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Okay? Get you got this? And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Verse number 8 of Philippians 3 for the projector. Uh, it says, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do not and do come them but dumb that I may win Christ. Okay, let me back up for a second. Paul understood something here. Paul said, Paul was a smart, smart dude. Okay, he understood Jewish law in and out. He knew everything. Paul, Paul was an educated man. He had degrees of education. He understood a lot of things uh, that were pertinent to this world and to this fleshly life. He understood how to, to get the job done. He might have had a business major in today's. And he, was a, he was a tremendous entrepreneur. He was a great scholar. He knew a lot of things. But he said he recognized something here in Philippians 3. This is important that you get this. He said, everything that I learned all that I've known, all that I've accomplished in this life, I count it as nothing compared to knowing Him. Okay? So he understood something. He said, all that is done. And he says, and be found in Him and not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. He's saying, it's not that I can do any, this is a, <laughs> I'm doing my best to get this across. But he's saying, I can't do anything of my own accord. It's only in through knowing Him or faith. You want to know what knowledge of him is? It's the faith and understanding who he is. So it says, of me I can't do anything which is of the law, but which through faith of, in Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Then he says in verse number 10, that I may know him. Wow. He's saying everything is, is done in the sense that if I can just know him, I'm going to have everything I'll need. In the resurrection, of, uh, the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. Was he saying he wanted to die? That's not what he was saying. He's saying he needs to know him from the very top to the bottom, from the high points to the low points. He needed to know him from his resurrection all the way to his death. If I, by any means, I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. He's saying if I don't know him, if I don't know him, I can't obtain this resurrection. Listen, this is a key, key point. Yeah. God just woke me up last night. You don't know him. Right. <laughs> you might not be able to make it. Yeah. There's a knowledge that needs to come. And I'm going to have lots of scriptures that back this up. Because God just was pouring them out to me last night. Not as though I've already attained it. So he's not saying you have to be perfect. There's no way to know him. He's unknowable. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. We may never grasp the fullness of who he is. He is infinite and we are finite. We can't comprehend.
attain all that he is. But he's saying, I'm not saying that I've already attained it. He's saying I've learned something though. That, uh, I'm not saying that I'm already perfect. But I follow after that I may apprehend that which I, that also I have apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I help not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Okay. Let me slow down. I get excited about this. Amen. Mm -hmm. Paul says that everything I've obtained is nothing. But what I do recognize is that there's something I need to obtain. I need to attain a knowledge of who he is. And if I understand that, then I can press forward past all these things right. of what I'm, my accomplishments. That's what he's saying. He's not, he's not talking about his past failures. He's talking about the, getting his past accomplishments. That's what that scripture is talking about. He said, I'm going to forget all of what I am and I'm going to embrace all of what who he is. Right. Okay? Amen. Amen. Hosea 4 29. I'm going to come back to something that I don't jump around. And then this is the one that uh, I just mentioned previously. He's talking to a uh, fallen people, a uh, people that have walked away from him, a uh, people that have rejected him. And this is what he sums it up in. And I say, uh, Hosea, sorry, Hosea 4 and 29. Amen. I think I wrote down the wrong scripture. It's 4 and 6. I apologize now. It's 4 and 6. It says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. They rejected knowledge, and I will also reject thee. So, so knowledge sounds like it's pretty important to me. Yeah. He will reject you if you don't have it. Then thou shalt not be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of God. I will also forget thy children. And then Proverbs 29 and 18, he says, Without a vision, the people perish. That's right. Then what is a vision? It is a knowledge of direction of where you are to go. When, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law happy is he, the scripture says. Proverbs 4. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of slow down. I'm just jumping, set my foundation up. But Proverbs 4. And if you go to verse number 5 in Proverbs 4, it says, Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Go to verse number 6, please. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Verse number 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Listen. It's the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all I get, and get understanding. And verse number 8. It says, Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. Hmm. Okay. Wisdom is the principal thing. Why? Because you can worship without wisdom. Worship is not the principal thing. Worship, worshiping Jesus Christ. Well, true worship, the Bible says for now comes the time coming where the Father sees us worship and they that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay? How do you worship him in truth if you don't know him? Right. People worship a lot of things. That doesn't mean their worship is true. Doesn't mean their worship is right. So you can even come in here and worship the idea of him. You can worship the church. You can worship the music. You can worship the Sunday school program. You can even worship the, the men and women of God. And not worship him. That's why wisdom is the principal thing. Or knowledge and understanding of who he is is the principal thing. Because when you understand it, and when you begin to grasp who he is, then your worship will become true and undefiled. Because once you know who he is, and you embrace who he is, you understand that he is the almighty God, the everlasting to everlasting, the one that holds everything that you need in the palm of his hand. Amen. Amen. I mean, I believe this wisdom, this understanding, this knowledge is talking about understanding the truth that he is the true and one living God. From the very beginning, you read in Genesis, this is what is so beautiful. 
You want to talk about people that say the Bible doesn't make any sense, it contradicts itself? You get a revelation of knowledge of who he is and what his purpose is? The whole Bible makes sense. Right. From the very beginning of the fall of man to the time the trumpet sounds, it all comes back to one thing. God restoring man unto himself. Amen. What was the what was the tree that the that Adam and Eve ate off of that caused them to fall? The knowledge of good and evil. What happened when they ate of that knowledge of the tree of good and evil? They recognized there was a difference. They recognized something had changed. They didn't know what it was, but they knew all of a sudden that there was a before the fall, they were in the garden living in peace and in bliss with relationship with him. They understood he's all I need. He, he's my creator. He's my provider. I'm nothing but dirt. But with, with his breath causing me to live, they understood something. But all of a sudden, when they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the enemy did something there. He understood what was going to happen. Because the devil, Lucifer, he was at one point worshiping the only creator that there is as well. Right. And then he looked at himself and became prideful. Right. He began to worship himself. Okay? Get me. I know, I know this is jumping around, but it's all going to come together in just a few minutes. Okay? The devil understood that if he could get the people to get their eyes off of him and onto each other and themselves, right. that he would that they would fall. That's right. Amen. That trick is still working today. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We must, must know him. Amen. We must understand who he is. And I'm not talking about that Jesus is God. Right. We believe that, I think, primarily across this room, that we believe that Jesus is both man and both God. We believe the oneness of God. We believe the God. And I'm not talking about theology right now. I'm talking about understanding who he is in reference to who we are. We are not God. Yeah. Although we make ourselves God. Romans 1. This can all be summed up in Romans 1. He prophesied it. Verse number 20, it says, The invisible, and once I get past this, I won't have as much scripture, so you can be happy about that. It says, for the invisible things of him, from the creation of the world, are clearly seen, being understood by the things which are made, even the eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So everything that is made that we see was made from that which we cannot see. God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was out without form and void. The darkness was upon the face of the deep. God spoke into existence and it came to pass. God created everything. He's saying the invisible things from the very creation are made seen. So God is manifesting himself through his creation. Because that, this is 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Okay. A lot of times we use this scripture to talk about when Jesus walked upon the face of the earth and the, the people didn't recognize him as God and they rejected him. But it goes deeper than that. He's saying the, cre the creatures, the people he created, they no longer were glorifying him as God. They became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. How? Professing themselves to be wise, they gave the knowledge of tree, the tree of good and evil and they get to self-evaluate, trying to make sacrifices and all of the things that you read through the Old Testament. They were trying, the law was all about self-justification. If I do this, I get this. If I don't go here, I'm okay. If I follow this law, I'm saved. That was what it was all about in the Old Testament. But this is something different. We're in the grace dispensation. I'm going to get there. He says that, and they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like a corruptible man into birds and the four-footed beasts and the creepy things. So what he's saying is you took, as men, you took this only God that there is, the invisible God, and you try to understand him and create him into the image of something that he is not, something that will pass away. A lot of times that something else is ourselves. We become our own God. The Bible talks about how our belly is our God. What does that talk about? Saying that we care more about our needs and our hunger and our desires than pleasing him. Okay, I'm tying a lot of scripture in. And it says, And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made by the corruptible man. And I read all that. Verse number 24. Wherefore God also gave them to uncleanliness 
through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature right. more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Yeah. And then for this cause, God gave them unto, unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use of that they were, that, which was against nature. It's talking about that they begin to change and begin to choose for themselves what they were to be. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was met. Right. Amen. I'm going to go all the way to the end of the chapter, if that's okay. And it says, uh, verse number 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, yeah. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. To do the things which are not convenient. Right. Saying, okay, I'm going to turn you off. You think you can do it better? You think you're God? You think you have all the answers? Go ahead. And turn it over, it says. Yeah. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, uh, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, and uh, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding. Covenant bearers, breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, listen, they knew the judgment of God, that they which they commit such things were worthy of death. Not only do they do the same thing, but they have pleasure in them that do them. Okay. So, the question we always ask is how is somebody that has experienced the Holy Ghost. Experience the transformation power of God. Yeah. They sat on a, on a pew and received the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues, they watched miracles before their own eyes. Yeah. Listen to me. This is very, very important. How do people walk away from that and go back to that which they know is wrong? Right. And enjoy it. That's a question I've always had. I have lots of friends that are enjoying their sin. Sure. They rejected God. They walked away from this truth. And they, not, they may not even understand. But what has happened is there was a transformation that took place in their life. Where the focus got off of him yeah. and onto them. Right. Right. Their knowledge was now based off of carnal things rather than spiritual things. Okay. I'm not even talking about sin. I'm talking about, for example, stressing out over a bank account being too low instead of trusting in their provider. And thinking, well, I've got to pick up another job so that I can. They, they took it into their own hands. Right. Is what I'm saying. Okay. Let me clarify because I'm not talking about taking, the Bible says you've got to be a good steward. The man doesn't work, he doesn't need. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that they think that they have to, they have, to have all the answers. And they feel like they need to accomplish their own uh, personal agenda. And so, when people stop understanding who he is in reference to who they are, am I making sense? When people stop understanding who they are in reference to who he is, they become, they begin to fall. Because they start to worship and serve the creature more than the creator. And that's what he's saying right there is that's the fruit of it. If somebody fornicates when they're not supposed to, even though they know it's wrong, it's because they want to do what they want to do. Sure. It's pretty simple. Yeah. I want that satisfaction. Yeah. I like the taste of alcohol and the, the feeling that the buzz gives me. And I like I like to be high and I like and these are things that I like. To the point where they become dependent on those things rather than on God. Sure. And they choose to worship the creature more than the creator. The wisdom and knowledge and understanding that they have has been perverted by a new knowledge. Right. A knowledge of self rather than a knowledge of God. Sure. Okay, I know this is kind of, is this, am I making sense? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I haven't processed this all yet. <laughs> this is overwhelming. It's so good. But it's powerful stuff to understand that Brother Ebert used to always talk about the new book. You know what the new one is in Hebrew. The new one is your soul, it's your spirit. It's the creative being of who you are. There is a war. Listen to this. There is a war for your new one. Amen. There is a war for your soul. 
But the Bible says that we've got to be born of the water and the spirit. You know what that word spirit means? Or what that word spirit is? That's our pneuma. We need a, that's why when we come into Christ, we must become brand new creatures in Christ. The former things are passed away, before all things become new. Yeah. Well, you don't get a brand new body. What is becoming new if we become new? We'll get a new body later. But I'm talking about when you are saved, when you come to the revelation of who he is and you're baptized in his name, filled with his spirit. You become a new creature in Christ Jesus. The scripture says we would all agree on that, correct? What well, is new? It's your new mind. That's why it's so important that we be filled with his spirit. Yeah. Because he overtakes our new mind. He overtakes our soul and changes us to recognize that it's him. That now, like, like I believe it was Paul that says, in him I move and have my being. Amen. In fact, let's go there. Acts number 17. Paul's talking about the same exact thing when he's dealing with them at Mars Hill. He says in verse number 23, or 22, he says, Then Paul stood up in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. Superstitious means basically they're doubting supernatural things. Or that they are too wrapped up in supernatural things. There's two different meanings there. You look it up. So that they either they're superstitious in the sense that they they reject anything that they can't understand, or they embrace it to the point of a fault because they don't have the understanding of it. They just trust it. Oh, if I see a black cat, I don't have to have that up. Why? Yeah. If I walk under a ladder, I have that up. Why? It's superstition. Yeah. It's just something that they can embrace. Okay? He's saying they're too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this description to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, can declare I unto you. So don't tell me you can't worship ignorantly. That's why wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom will cause your worship to be relevant. Worship or wisdom will cause your praise to be relevant. Wisdom will cause your understanding to come to fruition. Amen. He says that you ignorantly worship him. You don't even know who he is. God that made the world and all the things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heavens, and her dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breathe, breath, and all things, and hath made of one blood all for to dwell on all the face of the earth and have determined the times before appointed and the bound of their bounds of their habitation. Yeah. Verse number 27. That they should seek the Lord and happily they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us. Yeah. He's not far from any of us. Right. Verse number 28. For in him we live yeah. and move and have our being as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if just a few more. He says, he says, for as much, listen to these last two verses here, for as much then as ye are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the times of ignorance got weak. At that time of ignorance got weak death, but now Listen, he's saying, we try to make God into something corruptible. Sure. We try to understand God and say that if I do this, he'll do this. I've never heard this said before, and it, I used to be one that says this kind of stuff, but if someone was sick or whatever, we'd say, well, I know God's going to heal you because we've got a whole church praying for you. We've got a hundred people praying for you, so I know God's going to heal you. As if it matters how many we have. an understanding that he is the healer yeah. and that we of ourselves can do nothing right. save through him. That's why Paul said I can do all things through Christ. Yeah. 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 Listen, faith is not a magical power that God gives us 
to go around and say, be done. This is what I want. That's not what God gave us faith for. Faith is simply this. Recognizing that he is God and we are not. Yeah. And coming to an understanding of that and saying, I can do nothing except, except through him. That's why without faith it is impossible to please him. Yeah. For in order to come to him, he must first believe that he is yeah. and that he's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Yeah, but there is a war after our rima. There's a war after our spirit. Second Corinthians 10 and 3, I think I talk about all the time. He says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down strongholds. Then he goes on to say, We like to talk about that part. That our weapons are not carnal. We need to have the weapons of our war are, are not weapons of bombs and all this. We talk about how worship is the way the battle is won. Okay? Why worship? True worship is what it's talking about. Understanding that it's him that's fighting your battles for you. Right. And then he goes on, he says, For the weapons of our war are not carnal, they're mighty through God that pulls down strongholds, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that what? Exalted itself against what? The knowledge of God. Right. So what does he tell us to do? So bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Yeah. We must Continue to fight the war of our mind. Amen. Amen. There is a battle that is alongside in your mind every single day. That's right. Against his word for your life. Yeah. Against his will for your life. Against his purpose for your life. And we read about it in Mark 4. We read this, we read this parable talking about the sower soweth the word. In verse number 14 in Mark 4, it says, The sower soweth the word. And these are they which abide the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they which are sown on stony ground, who that they have heard the word, immediately received it with gladness, but they have no root in themselves. And so they endure but for just a time, afterwards when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. If you are truly in this for him, you can't get offended. Offenses will come. There's going to be things that can make. There's going to be things that will take you off. Yeah. That's human nature. Okay. The way Pastor does things may be different than the way I do things. That may be different than the way Brother Dan does things, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So because of that, maybe he'll do something that will irritate me, or maybe I'll do something that will irritate him. But for me to become offended shows me that my trust is in him, and it's not in God. Same vice versa. Sure. We can become offended in God if our trust is in Him because He makes no errors. He's not the author of confusion. He's from everlasting to everlasting. He's perfect in all His ways. And then He goes on to say that these were sown among thorns, such as they hear the word, but then the cares of this world, verse number 19, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter and choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Okay? Yeah. And then it says in these that are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Okay. You might think, what did I got to do with the knowledge of him? The enemy is not to steal your knowledge and your wisdom. The word of God that comes forth. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, so let's find out now. If faith comes by hearing, we need faith, right? Faith is our saving factor. Yeah. The Bible says it's the, through our faith in Him, not of works, lest any man should boast. Right. That's what the scripture says. Yeah. Okay? So our salvation comes through faith in Him. We don't faith without works is dead. Yeah. But our faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? Hearing the word of God. So from the very beginning, listen. That's why I keep saying listen. <laughs> because I'm so easy to do it myself. The word comes forth. Whether it be through a man of God, whether it be through your time of study on your own, whether you're listening to a preaching CD, whether you're just in prayer, the Lord speaks a word to your heart. From the moment that happens, the enemy is working. Yeah. He's got three different angles to your one successful angle. It looks like the odds might be stacked against you for the onslaught coming against you. Yeah. A couple of things might happen. One, the Bible says that immediately, from the moment you hear the word of God, the enemy's already trying to take you off. 
trying to separate you from the word. He's trying to say that doesn't apply to me. Oh, right. preacher knows my business. Oh, that doesn't, you know, I don't like that. I know somebody, you know, you talk about certain topics and you know somebody that's like that and you love them, so you don't want to associate and say, no, this can't be true. So immediately the enemy comes in and he tries to deceive you, he tries to pervert the word, he tries to make you mad. Uh, someone, if, a, if the man of God steps on your toes, you get like a, a, just a bad spirit about it. That's the enemy. Recognize what's happening. Right. Okay? Right. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. 
It's a knowledge of Him that's called us out of this darkness into His marvelous light so that we can show forth the praises of Him. That's right. Amen. He said, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these, by these promises you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Okay? Right. What is lust? That is your desire. Yeah. Your desire is lust. It's not always talking about sex. It's talking about you desiring after something more than desiring after God. It's called lust. He says, so the world, all the, uh, the corruption that is in the world through lust, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to your virtue, what? Knowledge. And add to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness. You want to be like him? Get that knowledge. And get that patience. And godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Listen, verse number 8. For if these things be in you and about, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful. In what? In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see it far off and have forgotten that he was purged his old sin. Wherefore, the rather brother, give diligence to make sure your calling and election is sure. If you do these things, you shall never fall. Mm. Amen. Amen. Know him. Paul said that I may know him. Yeah. Maybe that's your prayer today. That I may know him. So that I will not fall. Amen. Why don't we all stand our feet? The children are now. Amen. Lord, we just thank you, God, for an opportunity to come and embrace your word, God. We just thank you for the opportunity to come and be challenged by you. I pray that you would stir up our hearts, God. Lord, as we begin to study the word, as we begin to pray and listen for your voice, God. Lord, as we hear the man of God or men of God preach your word, God. Lord, without fear or favor of man, Lord, I pray that you would help us to receive your word and increase our faith in you, God. Our understanding of who you are and our knowledge of you, Jesus. And Lord, I just pray that you would strengthen us as a poor, and I pray that you would lift up this second service, God. I pray that, Lord, as we begin to triumph and march into your presence, God, Lord, the victory in our minds, God. And Lord, in Jesus, I pray that you would just give us the strength to push through all of the cares of this life, and Lord, that are just weighing us down today. I pray that you would lift a heavy load, God, for your yoke is easy and your burden is light. We give you praise, we give you honor, in Jesus' name. Real quick, one more thing before I dismiss you. Uh, if you want to talk about making it through, the trials, you want to say, I need to get victory over this situation, I need victory over that situation, I'm 